Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning everyone. Good morning to you. Good morning to everyone who has made it to another day to say thank you to God, to be grateful, to care for one another, to trust one another in ways that um, our circumstances has taught us to trust. That's it. I definitely know that, and we talked about this earlier, just how much this season has been an opportunity to exercise, word I use is practice, um, spiritual maturity and growth. So I hope you get your practice in. Yeah, I think, as you're saying, it has helped me. My spirituality cannot just be something that I claim and did not demonstrate it within myself, but it, it has to do with straight saying, you got to, you got to walk in it. Absolutely. And I think, you know, we talk a lot about the testing of our faith, mm -hmm. but then the testing time comes and, um, you know, uh, 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 we don't recognize it. We don't recognize when the Lord has shown up in our lives. Right. In the, the, the spiritual way, he showed up in our lives and gave us an opportunity to not just practice what we preach, but practice what we've read. Right. And what we've learned. So, with all that said, uh, definitely I'm looking forward to this message, Juan. Amen. Um, as you can see, we got a different background. Praise God. We just try something different too. Um, but whatever the case is, you know, hopefully your ears and your eyes and your heart. Is ready to receive from God, not Jill and Duran, but from God. So let's pray. Father, we thank you right now for your spirit and for your power. I thank you, Lord, for transformation. And anyone who was listening, watching, or however they're experiencing this, Father, let them see your light. Father, we will decrease as you increase. We will call on your love and just believe that your will will be done. We just thank you for the connection. Now, bless those who are watching and let them not be disturbed unless they just have to be by outside influences. But Father, let us all find our focus right now in Yeshua's name. Bless Jill and her flow. Bless me and my flow. And help us to both know you as you are in Yeshua's name. All those in agreement and who feel that they can be delivered at any moment, say amen. 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 I like that. Definitely delivered at any moment is really how we have to approach this life. Um, whether we're in a COVID situation where things are so busy or just going through life and our relationships with each other. Right. It's just the way that we have to approach this life. So the, the, the title of this message is 2021. I am determined to get out of my own way, part two. We can shout right there. Part ahead. one was Wednesday. But I am determined to get out of my own way. And I, 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 I use the word determined, but it, it reminds me again of something that one of our uh, teachers in the ministry, Dave Thompson, who shared, he, he leads a, an addiction group, and he shared recently <clears throat> that he shared, told them, are you interested in your sobriety or are you devoted? And, uh, you know, Earth Wind Fire said it this way, you need devotion. We need devotion, right. which means it has to go deeper than just something that's on the surface. And so, Part of what we say is, God, I'm determined, but I, I'm, I'm determined based on, God, what you say works, not based on what I do and, 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 and how I see life, but based on how you, your spirit has guided me to this point. And I'm, I'm very thankful to be at this point and all the things that have happened to bring me to this point in my life. Determination has a posture. Mm -hmm. It has a posture in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. Determination has uh, a, 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 a invisible supernatural energy mm -hmm. that lets you know I'm going to be moving in 
doing what needs to be done. Absolutely. It's an intent. It's intentional. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, this is what I used to say with, with when I had Queen B, it was uh, deliberate, determined, and intentional. Mm -hmm. And you really do have to um, be eager. That's intentional. Mm -hmm. You know, with your efforts, that's intentional. Right. And, um, but being determined really means, Paul might have said it this way, Apostle Paul, um, I press towards the mark. Right. I press, I'm making effort. I'm, I'm, I'm applying not just my words to this, mm -hmm. but my mind, my will, my emotion. I'm throwing all of that. And that's what I'm hoping that you're willing to do, to throw all of that into this space. Yeah. So getting out of my own way will require me to get into God's will and God's way. Mm -hmm. It requires me to get into God's will and God's way. You know, one of the things that I don't know if we really pay attention to is what it means to what use words that 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 are, are covenant words. Um, to be in relationship, covenant is a relationship word, and to be in relationship with God that means if if if, if, if you're married or um, connected to anything, then that that covenant is there. There are there are there are terms of agreement. Like if you sign up for something, um, a, 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 a new add-on if you're doing computers. Right. Well, oftentimes when you, before they let you just add them and let you connect to them, just the name and the surface part of who their company, they also give you terms and terms of agreement, mm -hmm. and 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 so that you can know about them, so that when you come into that partnership with them that covenant with them, that agreement for them to serve you and to be in your space, that you understand that they have a, 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 a way that they do things. And so if I'm going to get on my own, out of my own way, I have to understand the way that God does things. When you say God's will, God's way, it just automatically triggered me to think. That's when you must recognize what way have I am I walking in? Have I been walking in? What way and what will am I moving? Absolutely, absolutely. Because there is good will, mm -hmm. and there is there are good ways, but then there is God's way. Right. You know, and you can uh, uh, get along. What, what what do we know that? Um, you know, those those followers that we read about in the Bible, those followers of, of Jesus, those people who were, 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 I'm not even calling them the followers. I'm going to call them those believers in God at a particular time. Right. Right. And, and they knew all kinds of things. They knew, they, they knew the knowledge. They had knowledge of scripture, but they didn't, they did not get what God meant. And this is why Jesus came as, as a, a, a representative. So that he could, we could be shown God's will. That's God's plan to reveal God to us. And sometimes, and I hope that we don't miss that 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 particular revelation, because that showed them showed them how to live what they were reading. And when Jesus prayed. He prayed as if his life depended on. Mm -hmm. There were some times where he would he, I think they say he went in blood. Mm -hmm. because, and, and I didn't even realize when I look what I look or learn that that is a natural thing that can happen. You can be that intense that you can you can perspire that time. And he had to pray. And you could see that he was even when he prayed. For the disciples, mm -hmm. he said, y'all can't even stay up with me. He said, this is serious. Mm -hmm. I've got to be focused. Right. And, and I and I need you, your support right now. That's and, it. you know, when, mm -hmm. when, when people are accustomed you, to you supporting them, you know, sometimes they don't, they don't know how to be a, something that you can lean on. But this, again, this is why covenant and certain things are very important. Right. So that you don't just know people. Well, let me go this way. So that you just don't know people, but people get to know you too. Right. That's that's very important. So another thing that, that uh, when you understand God's will and God's way, it is God's will that you get to operate in a divine nature. Right. It is God's will that 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 that's that's why this this spirit that we have the fruit of the spirit. 
it is God, God says, listen, the effectiveness of the spirit looks like this. When the spirit has taken hold of you, you're going to you're going to see develop it because that's a seed right. and every seed reproduces after its own kind. Right. And you're going to see the the, uh, uh, the the spirit on you should reproduce. It should produce a fruit that looks like God, the peace, the patience, the goodness, the 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 the, the self-control, the, the kinds, all of those things. And so um, what my prayer is in our determination that we're no longer uh, 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 we'll no longer settle for looking like something else but claiming God. Right. And this is not a judgment because I, I stand at the cross with everybody else. I stand at the space of forgiveness and growth with everybody else. But I, I, my prayer is that 2020 has taught you a little something, enough, gave you some practice to see, okay, God, I have not been operating within your will, within your way to the best of my ability. If I can say just now, when you said to run, now I reposition myself to get more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And you said to run, lean back over this way. So. And I looked at the camera and I just looked at it. And then God's, my way would be able to say, I know how this works. I can tell you what's going on. And I don't need to try to correct you or tell you. Listen, they can pick me up. This 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 iPad is uh is that screen mm -hmm. does not reflect what they're seeing. Okay. And so, mm -hmm. but now God's will and God's way is to do that with patience, mm -hmm. to do that with not being bothered, to do that and understand that, and then say, you'll pick the time and y'all talk about that. But then I decided this was a teaching moment. To be able to say, if I'm going to be in God's will, I can't become angry while we're teaching. That's the word, because love is not easily agitated. Right. See, all of these things came to us so that, <laughs> what is my confession? For years, this this is the thing that, that hit me like, like, like somebody hit me with a brick. Right. Jill, love isn't easily agitated. Now, that's in the middle of a whole bunch of other attributes of love. But that one found me mm. at that particular time. And from that point on, what did it do? It called me out from the inside out. It called me my inside out. People, I, I could have justified it all. Right. I could have justified it all. But, but, but at that point, I said to that moment of truth, you're right. You're right. He said, love isn't what I want to get that down. Isn't easy. Easily agitated. There you go. Easy you know, on. and I, I, I used to skip around that thing because, again, and we'll get you that in the message because of the way of the flesh and the way of the, the discomfort. Not just discomfort of change, but oftentimes it's this, this discomfort of exposure. If we can get past renaming exposure as correction. Right as light as opportunities to grow mm -hmm. i think if we could call it see it as something else then we could get to the correction as necessary i think it's a uh, uh maybe hebrews 12 11 well no, it's in hebrews but this is what 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 the writer of hebrews had to tell them listen do not when when god is disciplining you that word means correcting you mm -hmm. you he's treating you like son so for those of us mm -hmm. you know who don't want to deal with that. What, what, what we're doing is we're refusing to be fathered. We're refusing to allow that father to raise up his seed in us. God knows what it takes for that seed that's planted in us, that divine nature of his that comes along with our born again selves. Mm -hmm. He knows what it takes and he knows what it looks like when we, when, when, when the word says there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end leads to death. He knows that sometimes we're in a way that seems right to us, mm -hmm. but um, but our ignorance, he has to deliver us from our own ignorance, our own uh, uh, understanding of life. And so if we'll be open today, I tell you some good things are going to happen. But one of the things I shared was, was this, that 
God's will and God's way is for us to, to lead us into a space where we are operating into divine nature. I'm going to read 2 Peter 1, 3 through 4, because that'll say it all. Say, God's power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowing the one who called us to his own glory and goodness. By these, he has, these promises, by these, he has given us valuable and matchless great promises so that through them you might come to share in God's nature and escape the corruption which evil desires have brought into the world. See, I'm going to say it again. By these, he has given us valuable and matchless promises so that through them you might come to share <clears throat> in God's nature and escape the corruption which evil desires have brought into the world. See, this this is why the Rhonda, the conversation in you all about the word covenant has to has to begin to mean something to us. Because this was more than it had to be bigger than a promise. Okay, let me rephrase that. See, this was written during the days when 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 a handshake was good enough. This was written during the days when no one had to have a contract necessarily. In order for other people to keep their word, all they had to do is promise. All they had to do is give their word. That's why the word of God says, let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. All you have to do is give your word. And that's what covenant is about. Right. This is what God is saying. He says, listen, when I give my word, I mean it. Right. I mean it. And if we would understand covenant and say the, the way they did, then meaning, meaning, meaning all of the the all of, of these uh, uh, confidence that you could have in a God that understood the importance of covenant right. and, 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 and how that word was important to the people that he was revealing himself to, that he was calling back into a relationship with him. And so this is what I want as we think about going into 2021. My prayer is that <clears throat> that's not something that we do haphazardly. It really does take uh, a determination, a some vows, um, some vision, right? Vows, the vision, the values is absolutely important because what you value is what is going to probably get in the way. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's go to slide number one. So for all of you all who are ready for this today, it, with this new way, it starts here. It says, behold, read it with me. Days are coming, says the Lord, when I will effect or establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not like the covenant which I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. For they did not continue in my covenant, and I did not care for them, says the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their minds, and I will write them upon their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. He says this. In this new covenant, okay, if you went on from that scripture, this is what it was saying. I'm going to add this little piece. I thought I would use it. It says this. Verse 11 will say this. None of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brothers, saying, know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. How, how is that? You know how is that? He just said it. Know how you want to know me? I'm going to write my laws. I'm going to put them into your mind. Give you the mind of Christ. I'm going to put them in your mind, but I'm going to write it on your heart. How does that get written on your heart? He's going to put it on your mind. I just want to get in on that. He want, he's going to put it in your mind. And when he's also, when he puts it on your mind, whatever you're experiencing and whatever you're going through, he is going to permanently imprint it on your heart so that if you think, your, you will think with your heart, your heart will think with your mind, 
and they will both be in conjunction. Absolutely. And that's what wholeness, holiness means. Right. Completion. Right. You said you two, see what happens in and you it is it, it, the dissonance. When when my, my mouth and my mind say one thing and my heart is doing what my actions don't follow what I say, I become that divided person. And we know that the kingdom divided against itself will not stand. And so you got the spirit of God, you got the creator working all of these things in your favor, in my favor. Why? Because if we are determined and with and we in and, 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 and our commitment and our desires for God, then God knows how to lead us. You can either you can either choose to be alone or all one. Mm -hmm. And when I say all one, you can allow your body, your your spirit, your, your mind, and everything to become united, or you can be disjointed. Listen, this is what I thank you for that, Ron. Listen to me, you all. If there's anyone in your life right now who is bringing in divisiveness, watch. Them. Let me tell you why I'm saying that. That's what this is what's happening right now. If you want to know what's happening in the spirit? Unity is. He's unified. Tying tying some loose strings. And it starts with us first. But this is an opportunity. How is that? How does that happen? Because, because of that exposure, because of that revealing. It shows us where we're all. It shows us that we're further away from something, a uh, uh, love, I'm going to use that, than, than we thought we, we, we were. So absolutely, that is what that did. I let my agitation mm -hmm. speak to me mm -hmm. and expose to me, me, my heart, my mind, and where before I would let the agitation move me and be in my emotions, and then I would act out of that. Now I let the agitation let me know, oh, there's something going on. And now let it move you to what's right or what needs to be done. Right, and, and, and there's a proverb that talked about um, uh, uh, the, the, the condition or the character of a man who conceals his hatred. Mm -hmm. You know what that means? See, sometimes we, we, we see hatred from the world's point of view. We see hatred as at the act, someone did something, but God saw a hatred even with Cain right. at the point of anger. Cain, what are you doing? Why are you angry? Right. When they asked Jesus, when Jesus shared with them the true teaching of the fourth commandment, and that is, uh, uh, what well, the fourth commandment, it was another one, but anyway, that, that, uh, uh, that, that you should not kill, maybe it was a fifth, that you should not murder. He said, this is what he said, but anyone who's angry with his brother, who nurses a grudge, who nurses anger. That's a need that people don't get on your nerve. You don't have a moment of disturbance. But he's talking about those who nurse it. Cain nursed that grudge. He didn't call it out. He didn't ask, he didn't answer the question. Why are you angry? It's self-evaluation. This is what it means uh, uh, when God said, in this new covenant, no one's going to have to teach you because I'm going to be your teacher. That's in the Old Testament too. It says, listen, they will be taught by God. I'm going to be your teacher. But how did God teach this one? Through my experiences, through my denials, through some, through me, me seeing my patterns. I thank God not through severe destruction, but definitely through, through opportunities to love and then not love it. Even if I conceal my hatred, conceal that I was against someone and not for them. Because we can do that. Too, mm -hmm. And so he says, again, I will put my laws on them into their minds and write them upon their hearts. How does that get, how does God's law get in my heart? Experience writes that in my heart. Facing it writes that in my heart. And then after they say that none of these will have to teach their neighbor uh, or say, or, or, or his brother say, know the Lord, for all shall know me. From the least of them to the greatest. It doesn't mean that there's, there was no one to guide them. This did not create a, uh, a, a, a solo act with, with, with what God called to be a community. But what he's saying is, 
I'm going to get to your real place of truth on the inside, and I'm going to start working from the inside. So that you cannot, you can know me and you can know yourself through me exposing and revealing to you your real self. Right. Slide number two. This is what it says, Hebrews 8, 13. Read it with me. When he said a new covenant, he has made the first obsolete. But whatever is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to disappear. What do we care, Ron, when we spoke about this this morning? We want you to hear this as you make this determination. That the way God has set this up, when he comes into the space and, 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 and your circumstances, is that you'll be brought to the point with the old, it's ready to disappear. It has to fade away and vanish. And the way the old vanishes is how does the old vanish? When I when when I switch partners. I had to make a choice that this way of entertainment or this way of distraction that I use used to use, it's it's old. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not going to try to recapture, you know, people are like, are we back to normal yet? No, we're not. We are going to have to adjust to where we are now and grow into the spaces that we're being ushered into. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so this other way, as you allow the divine nature to be birthed in you, and you, and you choose God's will and way over your own will and way, then the old, just, just, just because of that, will begin to get pushed out or uh, disappear. And that's what has to happen. Slide three. But here's our part and what is important for us to recognize so that we can get to this, get, about, get out of our own way. You got to give it up. Slide three. Let's put it up. Thank you. Read it with me. But the things that used to be advantageous for me, this is Paul writing, I have, because of the Messiah, come to consider a disadvantage. Not only that, but I consider everything a disadvantage in comparison with the supreme value of knowing the Messiah, Yeshua, as my Lord. It was because of him that I gave up everything. And regarded all as garbage. In order to gain the Messiah and be found in union, that's that united word, Ron, to be found in union with him, not having any righteousness of my own based on legalism, but having that righteousness which comes through the Messiah's faithfulness, the righteousness from God based on trust. That's Philippians 3 7 through 9. Were you going to say something? Yeah, I'm saying we. we went through it, but I like to go back to it. Mm -hmm. It said that because Messiah have come to consider a disadvantage, not only that I can I can I consider everything a disadvantage in comparison to the supreme value of knowing the Messiah, uh Yeshua as my Lord. And I I, I I've had to make decisions the way I was able to overcome fear and those different things and overcome depression, overcome certain things that I was used to doing what needed to be done. You can take that down. And I was used to doing things the way I did them. I had to get to the point where I came to consider it a disadvantage and it was because of God that I had given up everything and regarded all garbage as garbage. And I think that there are some ways that I, I used to be able to feel and I was able to feel good in that way. But today I look at that and say, I don't even want, I'm going to counsel that thought. I'm going to take that thought captive, make it obedient to my Yeshua, obedient to the spirit of God and become very responsive to it because I want to grow. I want to change. I want those around me to be able to grow and change. And, and, and if you take what the things that Paul talked about, his pedigree and mm -hmm. his education. Right. And, Admit 
Yeah, he he had all these things that he said, I can have confidence in those, those mm. things that I've accomplished. But I'm not. He said, but what I want you to hear what he said is those things have value to me. Right. He said, but I, but in order for me to know Christ, I have to not place that kind of value in those things. Mm -hmm. In some place in his life, of course, being a Hebrew, Hebrews and from a tribe of Benjamin and um, having been, having the zeal uh, 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 for his traditions and all that. Of course, in some conversation, that would have made a difference. But when it comes to knowing Christ, I, I, I don't want you to miss when he said knowing Christ. He's talking about being acquainted because he'll go on. We may not say this today, but you can go and read, finish reading scripture. He would talk about um, knowing Christ's resurrection and having fellowship with his suffering. See, when, when, when What we read over the week in, in 1 John, I think three, and we were talking about, and this is how we know love. Christ, God, uh, Jesus laid down his life for us. This is what one of his witnesses is saying, right? This is how we know love. Jesus laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for, brother, for our brother. This is how we drink his cup. Oh, let me phrase this. This is how we drink our cup of suffering. Because that's what cup really meant. Our cup of suffering, when we lay down our lives for someone else, when we get to the place where uh, 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 we are determined to get there, where we want fellowship with that suffering. Yeah, go ahead. When I defend myself, when I don't trust God to not get back, when I don't live like vengeance is God, then I don't get to my heart and my mind doesn't get to experience what's written on it by the Spirit, what is uh, uh, deposited in it by the Holy Spirit, because I am still allowing my flesh to solve these natural problems. I've had to say, let me let this suffering teach me how to grow the same way I've read of my spiritual heroes in the Bible and in some of them in the movement, help me to allow this suffering to teach me how to be patient, to teach me how to take my time, to teach me how not to act out. Let me allow this pain to move me because I wrote down when, you, when I said that, unless you allow that to happen, you don't get into the space of, and this is what we're talking about, of new reveals, right. re revelations. I, you, 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 I had to come to a point that I thought I knew God, uh, but I'm knowing him a lot clearer with more clarity because I allowed new revelations or new reveals and him saying, this is not good. This is not a good way. This is not a peaceable way. This is a provoking way. Slow it down and let me, the Lord, the Spirit, show you and reveal to you your heart of hearts. That's good. Which, which, which says to me, Deron, allow the Spirit to help you to know what it's like to be in the, the right time with the right action. Yeah. You know, what, what, what happens here a lot um, I think that we forget with the Ram when you talk when we talk about God writing something on our hearts, and that was part of the covenant. He said, This is part of that new covenant. But what the paradigm that we have to have in our mind is that there was no written word for them to just go to like this. See, sometimes we think God is like a Bible teacher. That, that Bible is a collection of different people's experiences and testimonies with the Almighty, the Most High. And so we need a paradigm shift so that we won't see that Duran, when, when he's telling them, when they're being told to do something, that they can run and look up scripture. They can't. They don't have access to mass Bible reproduction. You had to hear it 
and change right then and there. Meaning, 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 receiving or resist, just like that. Because there was no one that was going to re go back and repeat these things as lesson. You had to know what wisdom does. You had to know uh, uh, the importance of instruction and, and divine guidance. Every moment matters. And you have to be present in the moment so that you can experience what it is that you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And you cannot move to escape or distraction or take off ramps to be able to deal with that. But when the emotion, when the irritation, when the agitation, when whatever it shows up is not, as you said, it's just like that. Mm -hmm. No, it's just like that to listen, but mm -hmm. it don't take place just like that because you have to now allow yourself to grow through, which means you've got to love yourself and be more patient when you're with yourself than you ever have before, because God is trying to reveal the real you to you and what your spirit is supposed to be doing. Absolutely. And, 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 and how did Jesus learn obedience, a certain level of depth of obedience to what he said? Yeah. What they, this is how you learn obedience to the word that you read, to the word that you hear. For them, it was the word, but to the word that we had the privilege of reading. Guess what? We learn it through experience. They could suffer. Suffering is my experience. Deron doesn't feel what I feel. I don't feel what you feel. But if you allow the, the Holy Spirit to have that space, then you'll get to another space. Slide I'm sorry, you yeah, forgive them for they know not what they do. That did not become paramount to my understanding until I had to go through persecution and uh, accusations and misunderstandings. And then I had to learn, don't hold a garage, Duran, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And there were some times when there were some really major things that took place in this ministry and towards what we were attempting to do. And I had to say, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And I could only say that because I said, this is how my Savior, this is how the leader of my spirit, the anointing, was able to handle himself. Because I used to read that and say, I don't know what that means. But today I know. And that's it. that is, they don't even see me to get me to know that I was bothered by something. Why? Because I've always put, I'm always doing my best to put it in the place of forgiveness. Absolutely. And this is why it tells you when you have a righteous man, a person, you know, let me say this. Sometimes we forget that this David that we speak about and that we read about, that no matter what his life looked like to some people back then, and then, you know, that 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 the, the God understood this about David. That's a man after my own heart. Mm -hmm. And there, there were things that he did out of ignorance, and he had to learn those lessons. But that's a man of my own heart. And this is why within that same writing, from in that same space you can hear listen when you see a righteous man fall don't touch his stuff right because though a righteous man falls seven times he gonna get back up why is that because that that righteous man that person whose righteousness is in god is determined right and it doesn't see sometimes we define fall as severe worldliness no sometimes it's growth some 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 people fall short first of all we've all fallen short but some people, it's, th this is why that, that we got to learn to grow in each other's space. It's so huge to me. Because someone wrote about the righteous man falling for a and, and not to touch his stuff for a reason. Why? Because there were, there were people who, who, who saw opportunity in someone else's moment of growth. There were advantages. In other people's uh, 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 moments of growth. And so... What, what was Paul saying to us and what would we like to say to you? And LeBron just kind of introduced it. And that is that there are advantages in our things that, that we see as advantages in our lives. Things that help us get through. You call them off-ramps. Right. 
to help us get through a situation rather than us taking a moment to say, God, right now is an opportunity for me to find fellowship in your suffering, to know me in the way that you knew yourself, to know, to know me in a divine way. Let me say it. So slide number four. I'm going to call it spiritual advantages. It's like things that we still value that are uh, uh, getting in the way. This is just a few of mine. You can add your own. Um, so here's the questions I have for you to ask. What advantage is anger to you? See, Paul said that everything that was advantage that had a certain advantage to him, he had to count as a disadvantage so that he can get to know Christ better. Right. See, my anger keeps me from knowing the spirit, the fruit of the spirit better because my anger does not allow me to be in joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. Those things get in my, that, that, that anger will block all of that. So you have to ask yourself, what is anger to you? What advantage? You're, we're not doing this because it means nothing. It still has value. Advantage helps you override certain truths that would you would see if you didn't get angry. If you didn't get angry. What, what did we learn from Genesis? Cain, why are you angry? Why are you angry? And why do you think this, why do you think this is going to serve the purpose of, of solve the problem that you're having right now? Um, here's a, what advantage does comparisons have to you? What advantage that when you compare your family to another family? Bring that down, please. Go ahead. What advantage does comparisons have to you? You want to bring it down? You want to say No, something? what I was just going to say when you say what advantage does comparison have to you? Because as long as you can compare yourself and make yourself look better in your own eyes than they are, then you get a ego or self-esteem boost from this. Absolutely. But, I, you know, this is something I said to you recently. And I, I, I shared with Ron, I said, Ron, I don't have a lot of um, different words for emotions. Because I'm, I'm a root girl. And what I mean by that is, is when I'm sad, when I'm angry, I know that there's fear in the space somewhere. When I'm sad, I know that uh, 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 there's either fear or anxiety, or anxiety leading to fear in the space. So I can just say I'm anxious. Now that anxiousness looks like different things. It can look like uh, 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 fear. It can look like um, disappointment. Mm -hmm. It could it can manifest in many ways, but the root spirit behind it. <clears throat> um, so I don't have lots of flowery words, and I'm not saying anything is wrong with that, okay? To, to, to name every name each and everything. Sometimes I can't do that, but when I can't, let me say that. When I, when I can't, because I don't have a long list of emotional words. But I do know this. Um, I do know how to ask my question, that myself that question. What are you afraid of right now? This feeling right here, is sending you this signal. You're afraid of something, and then you're using this thing to fill in that space rather than allowing yourself to be in fellowship with the spirit of truth. I'm the exact opposite. I'm an empath. Mm -hmm. And when I am an empath, that means I learn how to be empathetic. I learn, I had to learn how to have some kind of description for this emotion, mm -hmm. for that emotion, uh, because of PTSD, because of ADD, because of things that I experienced, I had to learn to be able to identify with what I was going through, not analyze, but identify and be able to have empathy even for myself or others, because when you grow up in such a way, where you, you, you are used to trying to overlook things, I had to learn to be empathic. And, and as that's very good. That's very good. You know, what I saw in that is, in my experience, I, a lesson I had to learn, and you use the word to identify versus analyze. See, when it comes to me identifying something, I can't identify. I cannot determine your identity. Right. And so, unfortunately, 
what some of us do is that we, because we believe that we can know another person that way, we begin to analyze them in a, with a desire to identify their motive, mm -hmm. identify, but you really can't, you, you, because they, because the script of them is not written on your heart. Right. You can't. You can't. And so back to again the the when a righteous man is going through, to, we 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 look at the appearance of things. God said, I don't judge that way. I have I, to feel what you feel. That's what empathy is, to feel what you are feeling. And if I do that then I am able to understand how to make course corrections. Absolutely. But listen, I've seen that happen from the spiritual, the, the realm uh, motivated by the Holy Spirit, and I've seen that happen motivated by the flesh. And I've seen people think that because of the way you feel, that if it's that I'm that way, that, that because of why you do things is why I would do things. See, that's, that's, this is where it, it, it can be tricky. But when you are led by the Spirit, that means this. You talk to me, I talk to you, you listen to me. I listen to you. And what I don't do is, and we'll get to that in these advantages, I don't, I don't determine who you are without you in the room. That's assumption. That is, you, 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 you see something, and then you try to fill in the blank. That's not yours. J qualified to fill in. You try to fill in the blank. Uh, 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 uh. But how does this happen when it's done the right way? When it's done the righteous way? The person is in the room and you listen to them. You don't come in there with your preconceived judgment. You don't determine that what you think about somebody else. Because if you were doing this, it would be wrong. But that has nothing to do with someone else's why. And you have to listen. Or else, or else, this thing can get you in trouble. So here with the other advantage, some other advantages. Put that slide back up. So you ask yourself when you, to, to what did Paul have to say? He had to deal with one advantage of, of value. And then he has to go to what he called, uh, but, but compared to Christ's supreme value, these things are garbage. And so you got to hold it up to that light, because if not, it is a bright light for your life, but not compared to the light of Christ. So here's, let's go through them. What advantage is anger to you? Mm, if that resonates, mark your space. What advantage does comparisons have to you? What advantage does defensiveness have to you? That's easily anger, easily agitated, defensive. You know, defensive is advantage also, it keeps me from having to acknowledge my uh, mis mis missteps. Defensiveness, mm -hmm. that's an advantage. That's right. So, uh, so what advantage does defensiveness have to you? You know, what, what, why are we reading these things? Why are we going through this? We're going through this because somewhere along the line, because these things have value, they are getting, these are what's getting in your way. Defensiveness is going to get in your way of knowing your divine or participating in the divine nature. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what advantage does assumptions have to you? How does that keep Jill from participating in the divine nature? Because it doesn't allow me to let somebody else, God, who, who, who it, it puts me in, uh, 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 I already said, analyzing somebody, um, uh, uh, speaking for someone else instead of letting them speak for themselves. What else do we have? What advantage does worry have to you? What advantage does victim talk have to you? That's that was first. What advantage does victim talk have to you? What are you getting from this? None of these things, when we're doing these things, we're doing them because they have value. And if we can be honest about the value, then it will, we will be le released into freedom for our future. Then it says, I put, what advantage does worry have to you? What you worried about? What is the advantage? How does, how does that ever help you? Ask yourself that so that you can choose another way. What advantage does pretending and pretense have to you? How, how is that helping you? Because somewhere along the line, the reason why we keep using these things because they help, these, these things that become addictive, 
patterns in our lives. Then it says, what advantage does judgment, judging others, what does that have to you? And most of all, for me, not most of all, but last but not least, I didn't put on, what advantage does manipulation have to you? Take it down now. Thank you. Do I get to respond to me? Sure. Okay. When you say what advantage does assumptions have to me? If I assume that I don't have to communicate, mm -hmm. I don't have to talk. What advantage does victim talk have to you? If I talk like I've been victimized, if I present the situation as if I was acted upon, then I don't have to see what my contribution to the situation is That's or not. was. And what advantage does uh, worry have to you? When you said that, I said, if I worry, then I don't have to think about solution. I don't have to think about the next move. If I worry, then what I do is I distract myself with this energy that causes me to have doubt. You said, what advantage does pre 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 pretending or pretense have to you. If people don't understand that pretense is acting a way that you are not, pretending is see, not seeing the truth, but just walking in a certain way. And so I just wanted to make sure I had an opportunity, like you said, what advantage does judgment or judging others have to you? Because if I judge you, I don't have to see me. If I judge you, I get to put you in a place where I don't have to see, hey, this is what I am. But if I judge you, that advantage that comes to my, my soul is to be able to say, you're all right. Right, and what I just thought when you were saying that, in, in my experience, if I judge you, then I don't have to let you back in my space to hurt me. It's right. a protective mm -hmm. measure. See, if I say that you're this, because at some point there's still some hiding, some guarding, some, there's something that I'm afraid of um, uh, uh, that I'm not ready to see for myself. So I get to, I fill in the blank and I put a period where God puts a calm. Right. And I ask what advantage happens with manipulation. Um, and that was the last one. So let's go on to the next slide. You don't want to, you, or, you just, or you just want them to answer that for themselves. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. Yes. Yes. Because that law of God is written on your heart too. But what, 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 what are we saying this for? We're going to go to the next slide. It's what I call getting to the extraordinary. What is this goal? What is this lesson about? What is this? Okay, Jill, how are you going to get past this? How are you going to be determined? to get past this and then be successful with getting past this. I am going to have to, we, we just kind of brought you up to this point. I am going to have to know how to recognize when I'm being moved by fear or darkness or by faith and love. I am going to have to know that. I am going to have to be centered enough in my thinking and feeling in affection space that I know when I'm off-centered. I'm going to have to know that so that I'll know and recognize the sneakiness of the ego, the sneakiness of the natural man who doesn't want to lose his or her position to the way of the spirit. So now put that slide up. We're going to read Galatians 4. Read it together. But we, brethren, are children, not by physical descent, as was Ishmael, but like Isaac, born in virtue of promise. Yet, just as at that time the child of ordinary birth, born according to the flesh, despised and persecuted him who was born remarkable. According to the promise and the working of the Holy Spirit, so it is now also. But what does the scripture say? Cast out and send away the slave woman and her son. For never shall the son of the slave woman be heir and share the inheritance with the son of the free woman. So brethren, we who are born again are not children of a slave woman, the natural, 
but of the free, the supernatural. Take that down. If you go to Galatians 4 and read it above it or below it, he's going to say these two, two things express the two covenants. So these were, were, were things that help you see the, the bondage in the, the, the covenant that was natural versus the covenant that came by a promise. The birth that is natural versus the, the born again, the new birth. One is natural, one is supernatural. And what it says in here, Ron, that, that, that was, has always been big for me, is that the old self persecutes the new self. And it tries to keep by protecting itself. It doesn't want to, it doesn't want the vulnerability that comes with the kind of change that we're talking about having if we are determined to get our, out of our own way. So that old natural self, how, how, what is one way that I can think of that it persecutes the new self? See, that old self wants to think that once it does something wrong, uh, 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 instead of confessing and getting the healing by acknowledging and confessing, which means agreeing with what took place in exposure, what was revealed, because the old self is skilled in hiding in all of those advantages where ways to hide and take off ramp is so skilled in hiding that when the new spirit way of the spirit comes in to say, now listen, this way is a way of exposure. This way is a way of revealing. This way is a way of light, which means reveal. This way is a way of vulnerability and humility. It is the way of courage. But this way right here is the way of light where things get exposed. And so until, so, so what does, what, what does John 3 says? That natural way, that, that thing that likes to hide and just don't want to be found out, it persecutes. It persecutes this. It tries to keep down the seed that is planted in you. Right. And this is what Paul is saying. And, and if you know that, Sorry. if you if you would know that when something happens, that 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 natural part of you, it's not going to cooperate. You got to cast that down. What do you have to do? You have to find out what agreements have you made with these advantages, these values. What connection? What is your covenant relationship? Why are these things valuable? What promises are they giving you? What's, what promise do you, when you manipulate, what is the promise that you believe that you're going to get when you manipulate? What's the outcome that is promised to you? Because all of these things in covenant is all based on promises and agreements. And so he says, listen, until we get to a point, let me just pick up a few little pieces of here. Before I move on, um, it says uh, that that yet verse twenty nine, just as that time the child of ordinary were born according to the flesh, despised and persecuted him who was born remarkably according to the promise. And what this what Paul is trying to say to them, which we can we can embrace right now, is that listen, you're born of the spirit. You got a whole new covenant here. You have a new covenant. You have power. You have God's power, but that power is the biggest thing that stops that flow is unforgiveness. See, as long as you have unforgiveness with others, then you can't be forgiven. What is in the prayer? Forgive those who trespass me as I forgive, forgive me, uh, as I forgive those who trespass against me. See, love will have to cover a multitude of sins because this is about God's will and God's way. And if God's way is to free his people, then, then, then in our way is to tie his people, then we know that we are not in God's will and we are not in God's way. We know that. We know that if we live it out. So I'm going to go to the last slide. Here we go. Let's talk about this. Slide number six. Today is your day. Today is your day. Now is your time. Not yesterday. That's gone. Tomorrow is promised, but today of decision, today is your day. So let's read this with me. Therefore, 
since the promise remains for some to enter his rest, and those who formerly had the good news preached to them failed to grasp it and did not enter because of their unbelief evidence by their disobedience. See, your, diso your unbelief is evident by your disobedience. See, as long as I can't love my neighbor, that is evidence that I don't obey God. As long as I judge my neighbor the, a certain way, uh, 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 their future based on this moment right here, which I'm not qualified to do, that's the evidence of my, um, my disbelief in God's will and God's way. Simple as that. Then it says, listen, he again sets a definite day, a new today. I'm reading from verse 7, you all. He again sets a definite day, a new day, today, providing another opportunity to enter that rest by saying through David after so long a time, just has been said before in the words already quoted. Today, listen, if you hear his voice, Doing this message, do not harden your heart. Do not, don't step back into that darkness. If you hear his voice right now, today is your day. I can't, I'm not speaking to you. That's the God that has written something on your heart and has given you the mind of Christ. Today, do you hear his voice in this message? Don't harden your heart. Don't let your flesh rob you of your spiritual inheritance. That's what this is about. Amen? Amen. Let's pass it over now. I thought about something in the middle of this message that God just divinely gave to us. When I experience an injury, when you experience an injury, your body has an amazing ability to send those messages straight to your brain and say we're in danger. When you get cut on your hand or your arm, your body has an amazing ability to now expose you to that life's blood and show you that you're a human being and you're vulnerable. But what comes happens and what takes place is that wound, that wound that is left. Depending on how long it takes to heal that wound is dependent on how much attention I give to it or how much I neglect it. How much time and patience I let for my body to naturally heal itself. But how I am cognitive present with the presence and the essence of my body. The cuts will come. The pain will come, but something that people don't teach is that pain is a gift from God. Hurt is a gift from God. And if you use that hurt and that pain and allow him now to heal you from it, that's how your wounds can be mended. <clears throat> was a year cuts? 2020 was a year cuts for your soul. But did you tend to your wounds and bring them to God or have you neglected them? I found in this space here, when we talk about healing and forgiving others, have you healed and forgave yourself? Have you let yourself off the hook? How do I get out of my way? I get out of my way by taking the judgment that I place on others off of myself first. I let God show me who I am in his spirit. And I allow myself not to be held to a standard that God doesn't even hold me to. Who told you you can't make mistakes? Is all men not fallible? Who told you you're a wretched being because you chose a bad decision and you showed some anger? Are all men not fallible? But the God in heaven that forgives you and gives you that unconditional love is the same love you can't give to yourself. The question is why, my family? Why everything that you do and every moment of your day, you are constantly barring yourself with negative energy. Why is that adversary the loudest voice in your household when God is sent right there with his arms open? Once you get to that why of whatever has been holding you captive for all those years, whatever traumatic experience you experienced that made you shape your perspective this way, whatever kept you from being vulnerable and allowing yourself to be loved and give love, only then can you move yourself out of the way and allow yourself in the space to love others. The same judgment that we measure others is what we'll be measured by. 
there is no way around it. So I say for my family on here today, this is the year. This is the year, and I'm already speaking, hopefully if God allows us to see it, 2021. This is the year for you to become one with God. This is the year for you to put away all the things that have kept you separated from your father and bridge that gap and say, God, I'm right here. But what does that come with? Exposing the truth of what you've been hiding from. Exposing the reality of everything that you turned your back from for 20, 30, 50, 70 years. However old you are. You have to go back and bring that child, bring that young person, bring that middle-aged person, bring that pain back so God can say, now I can heal you. But ignoring it will only affect you the same way with your wounds. No longer, no longer do we live in a lie because it's not the truth, it's the lie. No longer do we live in the darkness because if it's not the light, it's the what, family? Point exactly. There is no lukewarm. There is no middle. There's either hot or cold. Which one you going to be? So God, in this season, I choose. My family who believe, we choose. My pastors, they choose. We're going to be hot for God 24-7. And whatever comes next, whatever God shall bring in, 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 uh, on the earth, blessings and curse, we will not be moved. Because right now we're making a decision that God is you and you alone. So stand firm in this season as he prepares you for what's to come. Because if you think, if you think that you've been tested to your fullest capacity, if you think that all that you've done over your lifetime is as far as God wants you to go, you underestimate the gift that you have, the power you possess. So at this time, I would like to pray with you, family, and that we would try transition to our offering but if all minds are clear hold on to your hand i mean hold on to your heart and feel your heartbeat as we pray dear heavenly father thank you for the divine cadence of your spirit thank you for the position that you will place us in in our lives to help us overcome some hardships but stand here unbroken and with our sanity Thank you, God, for keeping us even when we didn't keep ourselves. Thank you, God, for forgiving us when we did not forgive ourselves. Thank you, God, for loving us enough that although we missed the mark time and time and time again, you said, come home, my child. God, help us. Help us to break the shackles of what we put on ourselves with the limitations. Help us stop the prick. Stop the predictions of what can come that allows us to restrict what could be. Help us, God, to go into a new space with all the fear that we may have, with all the uncertainty that we may have, but the courage of God to overcome because we know that there's nothing, nothing that God has done that has not been done for good. So take the risk, my family. If he's called you to something and you've been running from it, now is the time to take that step. You don't have to know what the end will look like. You just have to know what your present is. And your present says, be honest and vulnerable with God in heaven. Help us, God, to surrender and surrender all to you. Help us to control our tongues when we speak and speak life and not death. Help us to pray and cry out to our brothers and sisters. and Help us to have forgiveness in our hearts 70 times 7, Father. Thank you for 2020 because you revealed to us where we need you now more than ever. You revealed to us where the inconsistencies are and where the wounds are so we can be healed in this season. It's an honor and a privilege to be able to call myself a child of God. It's an honor and a privilege to sit in solidarity with my brothers and sisters as we fight the good fight. So God, use us up to the last drop. Take us to a high level of consciousness in the spirit and allow us to fulfill our purpose. And all those in agreement say, amen. Amen, my family.